So today I wanted to make a quick video talking about something that I really haven't covered yet and I got a question about the other day and it involves the pairing manager. Um, so this comes up with sheet metal parts. Um, so I just loaded up a part here that has some problems with and we will show how to overcome them by working with the pairing manager. So you can see the two parts aren't aligned. So we'll go ahead and align them together. And you will see here that because the part has a mismatch, it won't even measure it. Now you can uh, just say, hey, this fails. Um, let's, let's just leave it alone. Just fail it. Let's get rid of it. But in the sheet metal world, sometimes the, the part, depending on how you make the measurements and stuff, can still pass. You still want to quantify it. And then the tolerances are kind of loose on these. So there are instances where this is an exaggerated case. Um, right here, but we'll go ahead and align the part in order to pair it. So by default in the background, the software will pair these surfaces together. And this is a great example of it working well. If I click on that face, you'll see that by default, the software is automatically recognizing that this CAD face is associated with that piece right there. And the same thing goes down here. It should be able to get that too, right? And sometimes it can get some of this stuff here. Yeah, it's not going to get that. It's not going to associate. Those are so far away. That actually is pointing out our problem here. Is, um, you know, it's not going to be able to, it's so far away from the nominal to associate those together. So what I wanted to do is use this as a tutorial to show how that we can still use um CX to make those dimensions and use alignments to fix that. So I went ahead and did an initial alignment, but what's really going on here is we'll go ahead and see if we can align it based on this side here together. So we'll come into a best fit alignment here. And I'm going to window in all the faces over here. I'm going to say, let's just go ahead and best fit based on those sides and then fit together. So you see here, it fits together pretty well. And now we'll also um, come back and say, I want to do a best fit based on this side. So we'll just window in here, say best fit. It does a pretty good job there. And you can always edit these if it's not quite right and I'm concerned that it may not align. I could always remove some stuff. So let me hide the scan data to see, you know, if I want to remove that top and bottom plane here, or if I wanted to remove these guys and then recalculate it and see what my fit is like. And that actually didn't make it any better because it probably was using that right there. And one thing that we may want to do is let's go ahead and get rid of that. I've had to do this in the past too, where I come over to initial alignment, reinitialize that alignment, and then come over to a best fit and window those in. And you can always crank this up too. And then you'll see it locks in there. And based on that, if I click on this to make a dimension, let's just, uh, you can always use this as a test. Just come over to dimensions and say, I want to make a dimension from here to there. Let's do that one more time here. you'll see that it's it's able to go ahead and create those dimensions on the scan data as well. See how it's creating it. Um, so I could, just for the heck of it, let's go ahead and create one more and for that other section uh, while we're at it here. So I often use a dimension just to see if it comes out and it's able to dimension it um, just as a quick test. But you can also come into the pairing manager and see 
if I select all these faces here, was it able to pair them together? And you see if they are nice and delineated based on the CAD faces, that it was able to find the pairing for that, right? Um, but you could, we could always do one more just to, for the sake of uh, practice here. If I come over and I say I want to do my alignment based on this. And let's clear that out and do it. I'll just window in just that. There. So we went ahead and we aligned there there and there and those are the order of our alignments and then now i can just come over to initial just to put it back at an overall best fit there <clears throat> now what we're going to do is use those alignments to identify the pairing that we just talked about here so the pairing if i go ahead and hide the scan data and just window in the entire part you'll see look at what it's doing it's looking and mapping each point to a CAD face. And <clears throat> you'll see down here that it's actually getting it wrong. Like it may still be able to make the dimension, but it's actually getting the pairing wrong. Um, so what we're going to do is come in and clear that out, and we're going to create pairing groups. And we'll just do it the same way that we did it inside of the um, alignments and we're going to say, I want to pair all of these CAD faces right here. And I'm going to take that group one, and I'm going to say, let's use the first best fit on alignment. And then I hit this checkbox here, and I hit the plus box. And then you'll see them turn red. So it'll go ahead and it'll align based on that alignment and then pair those points and then those points now belong to that CAD face. Now I'll come over to the second and we will go ahead and select all of these faces right there and then we'll come over here to the second alignment Hit the checkbox. And then we'll hit the add. So that's group. Now we'll do that with the last one here. So and then we'll hit the plus box. Now we'll do one final. Where we're let's do we're doing all of those. And we can deselect these sides. Because remember, it's not doing an alignment here. We're just actually telling it what alignment to use for the pairing. So we're going to say pair those with this alignment. Hit the checkbox. Hit the plus sign. And you'll see them turn that color and you'll see it apply. So now you can kind of cycle through and say, okay, for group three, it's that. And I accidentally hit that twice, I think. So, so there's two. And group one is this one. Group two is that. And then group three, let's go ahead and just get rid of that one. And then there's four. So I'll do these one more time because I think I might have blown them up so there we go so for the yellow we're going to say best fit alignment two plus and it'll add and then you'll see it go ahead and calculate those and i could always remove that one too if i need to And then hit OK. So now it's going to rebuild everything based on those um, alignments for pairing. So you'll see that while I have this crazy, horrible alignment here, um, 
I can still create dimensions for that slot. So just like we said here, I'll go ahead and delete that slot and it will hide the scan data just because it's easier to create that dimension. But um, those are used for just pairing. They're not used for dimensions. The last alignment in the alignments tab or the alignments group here is going to be used for the actual dimensioning. Um, so we'll come over to the home, actually dimensions tab, say linear dimension from here to there. And then we'll go ahead and turn on the, actually let's get out of here and turn on the preset detailed. And it's interesting, you'll, you'll see here that if I click on it, you'll see that the axes are created over there. And it's making that dimension for me. So I don't care about the alignment at the moment. I'm just interested in taking a pair of calipers, essentially, to that slot. What is that dimension, right? And this happens a lot with, there are certain things that with flexible parts that you still need to create dimensions on it, even though there's something that's drastically off. Um, so this works all the time here. If I can come over and make a dimension from here to there. And you'll see it creates those planes off in space on the scan data itself, thus creating those dimensions. And here's a great example too. From this face to there. So you can see that it's creating that dimension <laughs> from there. Now this is where it actually factors in the alignment of the dimension. So it's going to align that dimension based on how we're measuring it in the coordinate system, right? So we're using that plane for our dimension here. So that's why you're going to see that this, this thing fails by a millimeter because we're measuring parallel from this plane to there. And you'll see it's also bent in that direction too. So we can also measure that. So let's go over, before I do that, I wanted to create, edit my annotation style here and just go ahead and set it to detailed from now on. So now it'll do detailed dimensions. So if I come over and I say I want to create a bend angle, you'll see that that is like, our tolerance is, let's just do plus or minus 0.5 to keep it simple here. The dimension is 90, actual is 77 here. So we're 12.44 degrees off. And the same thing goes for over here. You know, if I come over and I say I want to hide this, and pull my dimension, create a dimension from here to there, and you'll see it's able to calculate it. So yeah, this was the point um, I wanted to make here is I had used highly exaggerated scan data just to show the process of how you can create these extra alignments. You notice that I did them first and then I used my final alignment there um, to then make dimensions off of. Um, but the purpose of that is um, these alignments need to be made first and then you make your final measurement alignment. And then the pairing will happen based on those alignments, but not the dimensions, right? And then that's how we're able to still create dimensions on a CAD model, specifically sheet metal, and still make dimensions. So that is my little tutorial. I hope that helps anybody out there that is making measurements on parts like this that are have a lot of warp. And I uh, hope that helps. Thanks a lot.